Welcome back everyone, this is Josh and Jeannie Rubin from East West Healing. In the last audio, we talked about how we got here, as well as a major problem. We're paralyzed, we don't know what to eat, we're overwhelmed, and there's a lot of fear around food. Well, in this audio, we're going to give you some solutions to that, or actually start with one solution to that. Before we go any further, we've got to mention, you know, we'd love to hear from you guys. You know, um, if you got questions, if you want to share stuff with the group, some successes, some struggles, or just, you know, what's going on, just share something. Please scroll down below, you'll see a comment section, and just, you know, start writing. We want to hear from people, and sometimes, you know, writing it down or sharing it can be somewhat therapeutic. So... The problem is, as we said, we, we don't know what to do. Most of us are... We don't know where to begin. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, again, we talked a little bit about it last time, is there's just, it's so big, this picture that we're painting for ourselves. So, you know, where do we begin? What are we supposed to eat? When are we supposed to eat? How much of it are we supposed to eat? And, you know, some of what you're going to hear us say is taking it back to the basics. You know, right. eat whole food, eat in frequency. But there's a very, very, very important reason why that, you know, those small meals throughout the day are so essential to your healing process. And I'll let Josh elaborate on that a little bit more. If you think about it, you know, just, just to reiterate, like Jeannie said... Let go of the destination and embrace the journey, and it won't seem so overwhelming, right? And it's it's honestly that simple. It's hard to do, but it's that simple. So if you think about food frequency as like a fire, because we're feeding our metabolism, right? When we eat food, it's energy. We're fueling our metabolism, which is all our biochemistry or all our physiology, whatever you want to call it, so we can produce energy at the cell level. Or if you just want to use produce energy, so we have energy. So every time we eat, we light in this fire. But if you think about it, you have a furnace or a fire or whatever it may be. If you just wake up and you have this cold house and you go put wood on the fire. And then six hours later, it's lunchtime. You put more wood on the fire. And then six hours later, it's dinner time. You put wood on the fire. How warm do you think that house is going to be? And maybe... Is that fire actually going to stay lit throughout that period of time? Probably not. So you're not producing energy. You're not producing warmth. You're not producing heat. You're not staying warm. That's what the metabolism is and does. That's one of the kind of consequences of producing energy is. So if you begin to eat more throughout the day, we're not talking about right now, we're not talking calories or macronutrients. So don't worry about that. We're talking about thinking about, okay, I have three meals and let me add in more throughout the day to actually keep that fire going throughout the day, the week, the month, etc. So I can keep my furnace going. So we talk a lot about stress. And I think one of the things that we fail to recognize, or maybe we do, I don't know, but I don't think we really give it the attention that it needs, is that regulating your blood sugar is probably one of the more stressful events that your body deals with every single day. And when we think about how that can connect to some of your other systems, again, the body works as a system of systems. If we think about how blood sugar is regulated, and it's regulated by so many hormones and, and different nutrients, but to just kind of give you a general sense, we have insulin and potassium, which is working to keep your blood sugar down, while glucagon, cortisol, adrenaline, Growth hormone, thyroid hormone are all working to elevate your blood sugar levels. So it's by far one of the most regulated activities of the body because it is so critical to our survival. Your body is genetically programmed to recognize low blood sugar as a threat to your survival. And if you've read the tech book, textbooks, that's like our body being in survival mode. We're tired but wired. We feel like we're running from a lion all day. We're constipated, right? Um, we don't have an appetite. This is being in survival mode. So if we begin to regulate our blood sugar through frequency, we pull our body out of survival mode. We pull our body out of that sympathetic stress state. And what do we do? We stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. We bring our body, if we think about it, go back to the first audio. Now we start to unwind 
the stages of disease and pull ourselves back to homeostasis. But the key to this is we need to do this consistently over time in order for it to work. Most of us want to do this one day or one week and say, oh, this doesn't work. Right? Well, we talked about it a lot last time in our last audio about the different phases and the accumulated effects of long-term chronic stress. And again, we are all at different levels of the spectrum. So again, going back to that understanding ourselves, we're going to keep going back to that because we have to have that piece a little bit more dialed in. But again, even with some of the tools that we're going to be teaching you guys, you're going to have the opportunity to get a little bit more clarity in what's working and what isn't working. And just to add one more thing kind of to the solution of food frequent that's really important because probably one of the biggest things out there, I mean, there's so many, but you, you hear people talk about their adrenal glands. You hear people talk about adrenal fatigue, right? And if you think about it from a food frequency standpoint, all adrenal fatigue is, is you not being able to meet your body's needs, right? The demands that are being placed on the body are exceeding what's coming in. Which have pushed your body into adaptive energy producing mechanisms. So, you know, a lot of you might be saying, well, you know, I'm going to be burning more fat or so on and so forth. And that we've got it completely wrong. If your body has been in a state of survival for a long period of time, your body has forgotten how to produce and store energy. The liver is not as efficient in doing that. Right. So we have to teach it how to do it. And that's why these days it goes so much further beyond than just eating healthy food. We have to get, we're having to get a little bit more specific because you can use your food to shut that stress down by giving the body what it needs. Right. And in doing that, you're quieting the chaos and providing an environment for healing to happen. How freaking cool is that? Right. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the definition of stress by Hans Healy, that's what he talks about. It's really, like I said, the, the demands exceed what's coming in, and that's a stress. So going back to the adrenals, if we are able to regulate our blood sugar, because adrenal fatigue, stage one, two, three, back when I was studying it, now there's seven or nine, supposedly. It's really chronic blood sugar dysregulation right? It's survival mode. So if we begin to eat more food throughout the day and regulate our blood sugar, what do we do? We take the burden off the adrenals because the adrenals re release adrenaline and glucocorticoids to regulate our blood sugar because the adrenals regulate the availability of glucose. How amazing is that? We can actually heal our body with food and the first thing you need to do is frequency. So it's simple. If you're eating one meal a day, that's great. That's your baseline. Add in a small snack. Have two meals. Do that for a while until you get emotionally and physiological comfortable with that. If you do two, add in a third, etc., etc. But if you do two and you go to five, you're going to be sorry. Right. Like Gina <laughs> said. And that's all we'll say about that right now, but just right. pay attention. You have to go slow. Yes. You've adapted your body into the state. And if you go fast, it doesn't know how to process all the sugars. It doesn't know how to process everything. So we have to go slow. So right now, it's just about really continuing to build that frequency with what you're already doing. And I think one of the biggest challenges that we find when it comes to really incorporating more food or different kinds of food or getting a little bit more specific <laughs> right. is what type of food are we really thinking about? It's scary. There's so much out there. There's so many bloggers. There's so many nutritionists. There's so many YouTubes. Everyone's saying eat this or don't eat that. Everyone's conflicting. And you go into the store and your head spins. So... And no, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, and we might make your head spin a little bit more. But right. This is coming from the function of the human physiology and right. food, the relationship between human physiology and right. food. So it might sound scary, but when you break it down, it's exactly what your body needs. Like Josh was saying, you're adding that kindling to the fire to keep that fire stoked, to keep that heat coming in, to keep it fueled and burning. So we'll, be all, you know, we'll talk a lot about that in our next video, our next audio coming up and really break down some more of the types of foods and then help you understand if, if what you're doing is working or not.